In many textbooks on flow and porous media, be they about filtration, chromatography, absorption columns, membrane filtration, or something else, it is stated that the effective velocity in the flow channels can be calculated by dividing the superficial velocity with the porosity of the material. But this is a bit like saying that if you knew a bank robber was seen driving car through Rome at noon and that she was caught by police 24 hours later in London, you could calculate how fast she was driving, as if the route she took to London did not matter. To understand what happens in reality, let's reiterate what the superficial velocity is and what the effective velocity, sometimes called the interstitial velocity, really is. Imagine a pipe through which a liquid flows. If you contract the section of the pipe so we get a smaller transactional area there, the liquid will flow faster in the contracted section than in the undisturbed pipe. We have one lower velocity v meters per second before and after the contracted section and a higher velocity ve in the contracted section. We get the same result if we put in a porous medium in the pipe. If you take the volumetric flow in cubic meters per second through the flow channels in the porous medium and divide that with the total area in square meters of the porous media, we get the superficial velocity v. The effective velocity ve, which is also called, known as the interstitial velocity, is the true velocity of the flow inside the channels. To calculate the true velocity, you must take the actual distance traveled and divide that with the actual time it took to travel this distance. In the left illustration here, we have a porous medium with only one channel. To the right, we have a porous medium with two channels. The porosity of a porous media is the void volume divided with the total volume. That is, the volume of the sum of all channels divided with the total volume. Thus, the porous medium to the right with two channels has a porosity that is twice as high as the porosity of the porous media to the left, which has only one channel. So, if we let the same volumetric flux through, flow through both porous medias, the superficial velocity must be the same for both. But the effective velocity, however, must clearly be higher in the less porous media. So far, the equation seems to hold. Since the porosity in the porous media with two channels is twice as high as the porosity in the porous media with one channel, the effective velocity must be twice as high in the porous media with only one channel. But let us play around with these two examples and create a third example. If you take the porous media with two channels and then rotate one of the channels and make it horizontal and move the bottom half of the other channel, we can create a twice as long channel that goes through the material in a zigzag fashion. What is true for this new material in the middle, which has only one channel, but a channel that is twice as long? Is the porosity the same as the porosity of the porous media with one channel or two channels? Is the effective velocity the same as the effective velocity in the porous media with one channel or two channels? If you think of this carefully, clearly the porosity for our new material must be the same as for the porous media with two channels. But the effective velocity must be the same as for the porous media with only one channel. Thus, there is clearly something wrong with our equation. If we now define the tortuosity tau of a porous media as the true length of the flow channels divided with the thickness of the material, it can be shown that the true relation between the effective velocity and the superficial velocity looks like this. The effective velocity equals the superficial velocity multiplied with the tortuosity and then divided with the porosity. In the special case that the tortuosity is 1, that is, that the channel length is the same as the thickness of the material, we see that the simpler equation is actually correct. However, the tortuosity of, for example, packed beds is typically around 1.4, not 1. Please note that I've simplified things here. In a pipe you get a distribution of velocities rather than one unique velocity. But my argument still holds even if you take away that simplification. A more detailed discussion of this issue and a careful derivation of the accurate equation can be found in the short communication on the tortuosity and the tortuosity factor in flow and diffusion through porous media 
by the distinguished professor emeritus Norman Epstein of the University of British Columbia. It was published already back in 1989 in the journal Chemical Engineering Science. There, Epstein's also explain the relation to the work by Koseni, Karman and Ergun. Finally, if there are any teachers out there that get irritated by this video, contradicting a textbook that you happen to be using, well, firstly, Norman Epstein has long ago demonstrated that the simple equation is actually wrong, so there is no denying that fact. And secondly, consider that your brightest students might end up doing a thought experiment like the one I have just shown you. And my guess is that if you keep on using the simplified incorrect equation, you will actually be discouraging your brightest students from trying to understand the equations they are supposed to learn how to use.